Woke up quick at about noon, just thought that I had to be in Compton soon. Before Easy E would be considered the godfather of gangster rap, before Easy E would rub shoulders with Guns N' Roses, Kid and Play, Janet Jackson, and even George H.W. Bush at the White House. What you began, I really want to build on. Before Easy es come up story would be portrayed by actor Jason Mitchell in the film Straight Outta Compton. So what you talking about doing? Cruising down the street in my six foot. Hey, that was dope, eh? Before Easy e would father seven children with six different women. Before Easy e would front the startup cash to start the most notorious rap group in history, NWA. The son of a postal worker and a school administrator, young Easy Wright had a pretty solid home life considering he was from Compton. But he saw more opportunity on the street as a drug dealer and decided to drop out of school in the 10th grade. Then his cousin was killed while dealing, and Eric decided, well, he needed to get into a business venture that wouldn't be risking his life. On top of that, he had always had an interest in making music. He hooked up with Dr. Dre and Ice Cube, and he dropped as much as a quarter million to get NWA off the ground. Now that was an investment that certainly paid off, but it was the same business savvy that would lead to the demise of the group. And then he would be at war in the media with both Dr. Dre and Ice Cube. In this beef, it had to be put on hold, when Eazy-E was diagnosed as HIV positive. He died from AIDS related complications on March 26, 1995. How in fact he contracted the disease is still open for debate, although a whole lot of people are pointing the finger in Suge Knight's direction. They get blood from somebody with AIDS yeah. and then they shoot you with it. Oh, so well, that seems bad. Happen, that's yeah. a slow death. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> easy e thing, you know what I mean? My name's Michael McCredden, documenting the life and career of Easy e before he passed away. Here for you guys on Before They're Dead. Now in this series, I've also done Tupac and I've done Biggie as well as others. Be sure to let me know in the comments down below who you want to hear about next. And Easy e this one was requested a whole bunch, so I hope you enjoy it. Eric Wright was born on September 7, 1963 in Compton, California. His father, Richard Wright, worked as a postal worker and his mother, Kathy Wright, she worked as a grade school administrator. Easy lost his virginity as young as 12. By the age of 13, he was hanging out on the streets and that's when he picked up the name Easy E. He got involved with the Kelly Park Compton Crips and then he was selling drugs just like his cousin, mainly selling weed. Now although Easy e grew up in a stable household, his parents were allowing him to sell weed. And he was doing a good job making enough money, he didn't really need to go to school. He'd also pass his time in his parents' garage where he would record music. By the 10th grade, he had dropped out of William Howard Taft Charter High so he could focus mainly on his dealing and his music. Easy e would go on to father his first child by the age of 20. Now being short in stature, he had to compensate on the streets, so he used his business savvy to get ahead. By the age of 22, well, he had banked an estimated quarter million dollars. Then all of a sudden, Easy es cousin, the one who had taught him how to get into drug dealing, well, he got shot, and Easy e came to the conclusion that he had to diversify his business portfolio. Now he had always had the idea that rap would be his next option, but it wasn't until he bailed out a hardworking local DJ by the name of Dr. Dre would he have the opportunity to start making moves in the industry. Now Dr. Dre and Ice Cube, they had a beat and a track written for another group who eventually turned it down. All of a sudden, Eric Wright, he was gonna perform on the mic as Easy e and all of a sudden they had their track, Boys in the Hood. My father jumped up and he started to shout So I threw a right across and knocked his old ass out The early success of this single had Easy e set up Ruthless Records as well as start up a partnership with Jerry Heller, the former manager of Journey, Otis Redding, The Who, Black Sabbath, and many others. Other rap artists soon joined NWA, including DJ Yella and the DOC, and their group released their debut album, NWA and the Posse, in 1987. Now to fund this whole operation, Easy e had invested a quarter million dollars, but off that one album alone, he would see a return of one million dollars. The next year, the group dropped straight out of Compton, the disc went on to earn double platinum sales. On this track, there was the album F The Police, and this one resulted in an FBI letter being sent to Ruthless Records. The group was at their peak of success, but it seemed that Easy e was the only one getting the recognition and the money. It was Easy e and Easy e alone who was invited to the White House in 1991 to meet with the then President George W. Bush. Eric Wright is his real name, waiting in line today to hear law and order man George Bush at a private members only reception. 
As the story goes, Ice Cube, he would depart from the group, followed by Dr. Dre. For Dr. Dre to get out of his contract, he enlisted the help of his bodyguard, Suge Knight, who convinced Eazy-E of the release with the help of some baseball bats and lead pipes. Eazy-E was now a solo act and released It's On Dr. Dre 187 Um Killa, followed by Straight Off the Streets of Motherfucking Compton. The three original NWA members, well they were exchanging blows with one another on their tracks on national television as well as in their various public appearances. They go in the studio and all of a sudden become hard when they used to do dance music. continue to work on his solo material, he was also hosting a radio show and appeared on In Living Color in 1994, but then his health suddenly began to deteriorate. In 1995, after Eazy-E was hospitalized for what was thought to be asthma, it was learned that the rapper had contracted AIDS. At a Hollywood news conference on March 17, 1995, he let the world know that he was in fact HIV positive. Rapper Frost, who was signed to Ruthless Records, he has recently gone public on his thoughts on how Eazy-E contracted the disease. He got hurt in Honda Valley on quad runners. They gave him tainted needles with acupuncture. I was told even in the last conversation from Easy not to even talk to that man. I don't want to say that name because yeah, it's, it's the a devil's name. While on his deathbed, Easy e married his longtime girlfriend, Tomika Woods. She was pregnant at the time with his second child. Nor Tomica or the child, neither of them contracted the disease. Eazy E died on March 26, 1995, one month after the initial diagnosis. At his funeral, more than 3,000 people were there in attendance, but it was only DJ Yella from NWA who paid his respects. Eazy E was buried in a gold casket. Instead of wearing a suit, he was in jeans, a flannel shirt, and a Compton hat. And the rest of the story? Well, the rest of the story, it lives on in his music, and his work, and I guess a little bit of Ruthless Records. But not really, more so the music. Feel free to leave your condolences in the comments down below. My name is Michael McCrudden. Thanks for checking out my personal channel. I do all sorts of celebrity bios on here. You guys asked for Easy e so there you go. Be sure to let me know who you want to see on Before They Were Famous, After They Were Famous, as well as Before They Were Dead. I've done a lot of the guys we talked about in this video, including Dr. Dre. I've done Snoop Dogg, Suge Knight. That one's on the way. Be sure to let me know, though, who you want to hear about next.